Thanks to Big God. What's the name of the song you're going to be singing? I mean, you're going to be playing? Wasn't that a band? Okay, listen to her. so happy they've been here now with us almost a month and um, we're just blessed to have her with us this morning and what's the name of the book you're going to be singing i'm going to be here. playing sanctuary it's a very old favorite song of mine i've been playing it since we were just about the fifth grade is one of the very first songs that i only okay. had to play and it's also one of the very first songs i ever played with pleasant street baptist church which is our previous church um, many years ago, I tried out for the Worcester Junior Symphony Orchestra, and they rejected me. So I pretty much put the flute down at that point and wanted nothing to do with it. And then I met Matthew Nunnally, who was a very accomplished piano player, and he convinced me to rediscover my joy of music. Yes. yes. And so he was pretty much the one who inspired me to get back out there and to get playing. And because of him and his wife, he unfortunately did not, but because of the both of them, I was able to pick up the flute and start playing. Amen. Praise God. said, Lord, I said, uh, you know, I only get these people uh, for about an hour or two a week, and uh, God help me not to just get up here and, and have nothing to say. I need a message. I need a message. I need a message from you, Lord, and, and uh, he began to speak to my heart almost immediately and brought me over to Isaiah chapter number eight. In Isaiah chapter number eight, the wonderful thing about being saved is, and uh, you know this to be true if you've been saved for any amount of time that you read the Bible, and 10 years ago, a verse that you didn't have any idea what it meant, all of a sudden, after 10 years of studying and yeah. 10 years of praying, God begins to make that passage alive to you. Yeah. And this morning, what I'd like to preach about is something very important. It's called being a disciple. Being a disciple. See, people think they're a disciple just because they prayed a prayer. But I'm going to show you this morning that praying a simple prayer may have made you a Christian, they have made you one that is labeled a Christian. That is one that rec recognizes Jesus as the Christ. They'd say you're a Christian. You do know there's a bunch of folks that aren't saved that name the name of Christian. Yeah. Amen? Yeah, I mean, yeah. come on now. Get with me now. You know as well as I, there's churches out there that preach things that got to be done to get saved. Yeah. They right. preach you got to be baptized to be saved. They preach you got to take the Lord's Supper to be saved. Yeah. They preach all kinds of things and they try to add to the cross of Calvary. You can't add anything no, to the cross sir, of Calvary. Amen. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It's the Word of God. 
And over here in Isaiah chapter number 8, I found something amazing. And uh, in Isaiah chapter number 8, if you would, and let's look at it for just a few moments here. And uh, let's look at verse number 15 and following. And many among them shall stumble. And let's talk about the church age here. This is a prophecy. This is a prophecy about a time when there'll be a people that are his disciples. Did you know that in the Bible altogether there's over 300 mentions the word disciple or disciples, plural. Did you know out of the 300 plus times, it's only mentioned one time in the Old Testament? Right here. And you know what it's talking about over here in Isaiah chapter number 8? It's talking about a group of people in a future time period that will have something. They'll be his disciples and they'll have something and God will give it to them. And now let's look and see what it says. It says in verse number uh, 15 and then 16, it says, Many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Now look at verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Now my question is here, are you one of his disciples? Amen. If you're a disciple yes, of the Lord Jesus Christ, guess what? You're going to be able to see it in just a few moments. Because being a disciple, unlike being labeled a Christian, isn't something you just get labeled. It's something you are. Amen. You're a disciple is to be a student. Amen. It is to enroll as a student Amen. into a teaching. Yeah. See, if I want to be a disciple of the martial arts, I've got to join a, I've got to join a certain... Uh, uh, a certain art, and it's whether it's, it's Wadaru, and you become a disciple of Wadaru, and you learn everything you can about that thing. Yeah. But what about being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Huh. What do you got to have to be a disciple? Is it simply making a little day, you say a little prayer? You pray a prayer, oh Jesus, save my soul, now you're a disciple? Not according to the scripture. To be a disciple is one thing, to be a Christian is another. I want you to notice as it continues on, it says, and I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Now listen to me. Do you understand something? The Jewish people. It's about the Jewish people. This is a book all about the Jewish people, okay? The Lord Jesus Christ, his mother was Jewish, okay? Uh, it's all about the Jews. It's yeah. salvation that came to the Jews, and the Jews rejected it, amen? Yeah, and it came to the Gentile. That's you and I. Well, during this period of time here, it says, I and the children whom the Lord have given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel. I wonder if a Jewish person saw you, if they'd be jealous of the relationship you have with their God. Because that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. You're supposed to make those children of Israel, the Jew, jealous. Amen. Because you now are in right relationship with the God of the Bible. The God that had given the Jews the oracles of God. They had it. They had the Old Testament. They were the ones in charge of it. They were the ones to make sure that it didn't get perverted. They were the ones to make sure that it was kept and it wasn't given away, that it wasn't polluted by the world. Now what happens, it's given to his disciples. Now, if you're a disciple of the Lord's, the first thing you better decide is either he left his book or he didn't. Right. Either he preserved his Amen. word for you and I or he didn't. Yep. If he preserved his word, then guess what? You better recognize it as that. This is the words yes, and plural of God. It doesn't contain the thoughts of God. It contains God himself yeah. in paper and ink. This Amen. is as much authority as you're ever going to find on this earth. Yes, you sir. can go to the Catholic dogma. You can go to the Protestant dogma. You can follow their catechism, and you'll wind up in hell. Yes, you'll sir. wind up in hell crying out to God, saying, why, God? Why? You want to know why? Because you didn't come the way he said. Yes, he said, come unto me, all you that are burdened. Yes. Burdened with what? Religion! Yeah. I'm sick of religion. I'm sick of a religion that goes out and tells people it's okay to stay in your sin. God will accept you the way you are. God doesn't accept you the way you are. God accepts the Lord Jesus Christ when you receive him. He doesn't look down at you and say, oh, you're such a sweet, good human being. He doesn't look at you like that at all. He recognizes only his son, yeah. Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you're covered 
with the blood of That's Jesus right. Christ. When he looks down from heaven, he can't look at sin. Do you remember the Lord Jesus Christ hanging on the cross? And he said what? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Yeah. That was your cry. Man. That was you yeah. nailed to that cross, right. young lady. That was you nailed to the cross, young man. That's your cry. Yeah. Amen. Thank and you, you know God. what? Thank you, Jesus. Rightfully so. We should be forsaken. Amen. Yeah. We crucified the Lord. Yeah. You think it was just them? If you were there and I was there, we'd have been doing the same thing. We'd have been yelling at them. We'd have been jeering at them. We'd have been yelling, hey, you saved others. Come down off the cross and save yourself. We'd have made mock of them. We'd have laughed at them. We'd have done all the things the rest of the world did that day. Because don't forget, even his own didn't follow him. Yeah. Even his own stayed back. John stood afar off, and Peter warmed himself with the world while the Lord was going through what he was going through. The Bible says all forsook him. You think you're special? I'm special? No, we would have forsook him. We would have forsook him. I know right now we're sitting here and going, I'd do anything for the Lord, but so did his disciples. Yeah. His disciples sat with him. Matter of fact, his disciples right before... This event took place where he's taken. He says to them, I want you to sit down, boys. And don't forget, Judas was there too. He says, sit down, boys. I got to do something. And they said, what, Lord, what are you going to do? And the Lord says, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it. I'm going to wash your feet. And Peter says, you ain't going to wash my feet. And he says, Peter, you know what I'm talking about? I must wash you. Jesus was teaching something there. Yeah. He was teaching to become a servant to all. Mm. And the Lord of glory gets down and washes the feet of those disciples. And you know, shortly after that, they all fled. They all ran. Here's a man that fed them. Here's a man that clothed them. He's a man who gave them all these things for the three years that they traveled with him. And in the end, he even takes and girds himself about, gets a towel, and washes all of their feet to show them that he's truly a servant. Mm. And what do they do? In the end, deny him. In the end, reject him. In the end, after he's dead, after he's buried, and after that he, he's rise again, Peter's locked away. And guess what? All of the church is praying for Peter to get released. The whole church, everybody, they're all praying, all holding hands, I'm sure, praying, Lord, give us Peter back. We need Peter back. And all of a sudden, who is it? It's me, Peter. Peter said he's at the door. They said, you're crazy. Wait a minute, what are you praying? You're praying for Peter to come, and then God brings Peter, and everybody thinks you're crazy. Is that the kind of prayer person you are? Do you pray not expecting things to take place? Do you pray for people to get saved, but then in your heart you're already doubting that they'll ever be saved? They're too far gone. They're too wicked. They believe too much the wrong way. There's no way they're going to get saved. Then don't pray. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't pray. If you don't believe he can do all things, then don't pray. You know what the Bible says? Talking about a woman getting pregnant that had never been with a man, a virgin. All things are possible with God. Amen. Now think about that one. Now I know scientists now, and they got all these little things that they can do, and they can take a woman that's a virgin, and they could take and they could take and implant something into her, amen, that she could have a baby and never have known a man. See, they've come a long way, haven't they? They've come a long way from denying Jesus Christ. They've come a long way to deny Jesus Christ now scientifically and say, no, it couldn't be, couldn't be. And if it was, it had to be scientifically done. It wasn't a miracle. Listen, we've got a miracle working God. Yeah. All right. Now, the disciple here in Isaiah chapter 8, if you read Isaiah 8, you know what you're going to read about? The stumbling block that's talking about Jesus Christ in the previous verse. This is all about the coming church. And during the coming church, the Bible says in Isaiah 8, he will give to his disciples the what? Testimonies and the law. Amen. Well, it's just the testimony and the law. What's the testimony of Jesus Christ? Come on. I got your revelation. What's Jesus Christ's testimony? Prophecy. Right? So what he's telling you here is the disciples are going to have the testimony and the law. They're going to have it.
They're going to be the ones that have it in the last day. Yeah, They're yeah, going to yeah. be the ones that will actually have my very words. And it won't be the whole world that has it in a hundred different translations. It'll be one group of people, and they'll be my disciples. And those disciples will what? Bind up the testimony and seal the law where? Among my disciples. Why in verse 18? So that it'll be a uh, signs and wonder to Israel from the Lord of hosts. Verse 19. And when they shall say, unto the you, seek you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep in that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God? Question. For the living to the dead? Should the living and the dead be seeking God? Now look at verse 20. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Listen, my friend. What you have here is the scripture telling you that the true disciple will have the word of God. Amen. If he doesn't have the word of God, if he doesn't bind up the testimony of the law, there's no light in him. Did you read it? Read it. Read it. Look what it says, verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, colon. Look at If they speak not according to this word, it is because why? There is no light in them. Amen? Amen? That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Well then, let's go ahead over to Matthew chapter 10. Let's look at Matthew chapter 10, and let's look at what the Lord has to say about disciples. Okay? Let's see where you fit. If you're a disciple, then guess what? You've got the Word of God. You've got it. The question is, are you going to give it up? When the scholar comes along and says, yeah, but in the Greek it says this. In the Hebrew it yeah. says this. In the Aramaic it says this. The better rendering for the English word would be this. Right. Are you going to take and allow them to steal the words of God from you? And let the scholars and let those that think they're educated take this from you and say, you can't understand the English. You need to go to another language that you don't understand. Greek. And then if you study Greek and get the Greek down, then you'll be able to understand what God's really saying. Well, guess what? That's a lie. That's a lie. There's only one way you'll know what that book is all about. Yeah. And that's if the Holy Spirit of the living God lives inside of you. Man. And it teaches you. Yeah. Yes. All it does is take what the preacher says and either inside you there's something going, I agree with that. Or there's something inside of you going, heresy, I don't agree with that. That is the question. Yeah. You go, Brother Joe, have you sat in churches like that? I've sat in churches and yelled out heresy while they're preaching. Oh, yeah. You want to get up there and preach some stuff that's heresy? I'm just the guy to sit out there and yell out to you, heresy! Because that's what it is. Amen. Let's take a look at what the Lord has to say. Verse 24. The disciple is not above his master. My, my, my. I just told you about the Lord, right? Washing the feet. Yeah. Nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Let me ask you something. Don't you understand who you affiliate yourself with? That's who you are going to be like, or at least that's who they're going to say you are. Yeah. If you decide to go run with a crowd that's using all kinds of different versions of the Bible, and they got a preacher that stands up there and tells you you need to have Greek and Hebrew to understand what the English has to say, guess what? You're in trouble. You're going to find yourself lost. Yeah. You're going to find yourself sitting there not knowing what to do. You want to know why? Because someone just stood up and began to lord over you and tell you only they have the words of God. And they're the ones that studied Hebrew. And they're the ones that studied Greek. And they're the ones to tell you now that the better rendering would be found in the New International Version, the New King James Version, the New American Standard Version, the Revised Standard Version, the American Standard Version, the Revised American Standard Version, the Living Bible, the Living New International Bible. And we can go on and on and on and on. You know why they made all those Bibles? Money. Money. Yeah, that's right. Why would a publisher make a book? To make money off it. Sure. That's why they publish them. Yeah. That's why they publish them. And every couple of years they come out with a new version. So lunkheads will go out and buy the new version. Yeah. And they'll get more money. See? That's what it's about, money. And they'll take and they'll take those new international versions, all the other versions, and they'll take and they'll put them leather bound and charge you $100 for it. And it ain't even a word of God. Now, the disciple here, it says, it goes on, and if you want to be a part of that group, I guess that's where you'll be, but you might as well mark it down that you're part of that household. 
Don't run with that crowd. Go to those churches on Sunday. Pray with them. Give your money to those churches. And then say, well, I'm not part of them. I just go there. No, you're part of them. Wow. You're a disciple of Beelzebub. Amen. Mm. Hey, let's say, Fear, verse 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed mm. and hid that shall not be known. Now, verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. Wow, wow, wow. What did we read in Isaiah? That those that what? Don't have the word, have don't light. have the light. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You think I come up with this stuff by myself? No. See, Isaiah chapter 8, the cross reference over here to Matthew chapter number 10. You want to know how? By the Holy Ghost. Amen. There's no book that I went to that said, give me a cross reference to match up light. Amen. Over there in Isaiah chapter number 8, the Holy Ghost that lives inside said, I got just the verse for you. And I go over here and it says in verse 27, what I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. Let me tell you something about a disciple. The disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ will be a street preacher. He'll be a guy that'll walk out in that street and a witness to people. He'll share with people that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Did you know over in England two preachers got arrested recently? They were arrested for saying these words. Jesus is the only way to heaven. They were found guilty. Wow. Found guilty in court for causing division among others and hate crime for saying your God's the only way. Found guilty. What's going to happen to us in America? Yeah. It's coming. You think it's not coming? Yeah. It's coming. It's coming. Listen, how many street preachers do you see out there? We live in a city of 180,000 souls. Second largest in all of New England is little old Worcester, Massachusetts. How many street preachers do you see out there preaching on a street corner? How many times have you walked down the street to have somebody go, i got a gospel track for you. Let me give you a gospel track. Have you been walking out there among the people and seen uh, holding signs up saying the world is coming to an end, come to Jesus Christ? No, we haven't seen any of that. So what do you figure? When the time of persecution comes, all of a sudden these preachers are going to go, oh, well, let me go in the street now. No, here's what's going to happen. As soon as they start saying, hey, you can't say behind that pulpit things about LGBT, and you can't say things about uh, uh, other religions, and you can't say that uh, Satanism, which is becoming huge in America. Yeah. I mean, right now you're reading all kinds of articles about witches yeah. nationwide coming together at a certain time to put spells on our president. Right. Right. This is in regular newspapers. Yeah. Yeah. This isn't in some far-fetched newspaper that I read, you know, because I'm crazy. This is stuff that's in the regular newspaper that you can read about these groups calling out one to another. You know what I don't see? Is the Baptist calling out one to another to pray for our president. Right. You yeah. know the Bible says we're supposed to pray first for all of our leaders. Yeah. First and foremost. And that included uh, Obama Nation before this. We should have been praying for that one too. Talk about demonic. Here's a fellow that takes and, and, and actually as a president takes and it's in the newspaper, takes and has a citizen's phone tap. The President of the United States had Donald Trump's phone tapped five months before the election. <laughs> Do you know he's the only president ever that stayed in Washington and lives just a few blocks away? And his whole job is to be an agitator. Sure. That is to get those of liberal mind thinking in out there in the street and saying no to Donald Trump, he's not our president still. Do you realize what's going on in America today? You might not understand it, but it's a battle for right and a battle for wrong. Yeah. It's a battle for good and evil, and it's a battle for your heart and your mind. Yeah. Yeah. And it starts with you not having the word of God as final authority. Yeah, if I can right. rob you of your final authority, then you can believe what man has to say. Right. But if I give you the final authority, you can check any man out. Yeah. Any man. You can check his water. You can see what he's all about. You can see whether he stands for what's right or what's wrong. And you judge it by that book. Amen. Now it said there in Isaiah 8, in the future, there would be a group called the Disciples. I told you that out of 300 plus references, there's only one reference in the Old Testament, and it's talking about you and I. Those of you that claim to be Christian, it's time to become a disciple of the Lord right. Jesus Christ. It's not enough to just name Christian. Hey, you're on your way to heaven. I'm glad. I'm glad you're on your way to heaven. And I have no doubt that if you made that decision and you prayed and asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, that you will 
And when the moment you die, you'll be in the presence of Almighty God. The Bible says, what is your life but a vapor that appears for a short time and then vanisheth away? It's appointed on a man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Yeah. Lo and behold, let me tell you something, friends. Without, without the Word of God being your final uh, uh, decision-making apparatus, you're going to be stuck with a world yeah. that is taking things and switching them around. That's right. Taking that which is normal and making it abnormal. Yeah. Listen, I'm not that old. I'll be 54 years old. I'm not that old. But what I'm hearing taking place in our public schools today, oh, it's all funny. turned around. All of it is turned around. Yeah. To a point where when you go in and say, hey, I don't want my child being taught this stuff. It goes against what the word of God has to say. Next thing you're going to get is a visitor from the DCF department. Going to rob you of your babies and take them from you. And you go, well, I only take them from people that are off in the world doing wrong things. Go ahead and stop talking about God too much and see if DCF don't kick your door in. Say you want to homeschool your kid instead of sending them to the public school and see if the world don't come knocking knocking through and, and take your kid. Listen, the government schools... Don't teach Jesus Christ as God. That's right. You know what I'm finding out, though? My granddaughter was taught all about the Muslims. Yeah, that's right. All about different yeah. religions. All about the monotheistic about religions of the world. She's in seventh, eighth grade teaching her that stuff. You figure that's a good thing or a bad thing? Bad. Let me tell you something. I never got caught that stuff in school. No. We never got taught about all different religions. No, we did every morning. We got up, we went into our home, 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 home room, and we got in there. And then we stood up and we said our pledge allegiance, right? And then after that, okay, we had prayer. Yeah. And then in a little short time after I got going to school in 68 or so, around 69 or 70, they took the prayer away and said, you can have a moment of silence. Yeah. Yeah. You know what they did now? And said, no moment of silence. The day's too busy. Mm. High school kids don't have time to pray before classes. Yeah. Exactly. High school kids don't have it. They, they should be because they, they, that's what they need to, that's is right. prayer. Need. But listen, here's what we say. Let's not mix our government school with our Christian kids. But let me tell you something. We put our Christian kids in the government school. Yeah. You reckon that they're part of that household now? Yes, they are. The household of the Elzebub. See, we can't take our kids and put them in there and then fight and go, we're going to change the public school system. Ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. You go, why are you saying all this? Because we're going to start a Christian school. What do you think? Amen. Why do you think we came Amen. here? Do you think we came here just to talk to you on Sunday mornings? Huh? I want that baby that's inside that womb to grow up. I want little Eli growing up to be a preacher boy. I want JJ out there on a street corner when he's a teenager telling me, I'm proud to tell him about Jesus Christ. Not ashamed, not embarrassed. Because that's what it's all about. But you notice here the disciples... Uh, it goes on, and the Lord's telling him uh, about what a disciple will be. And he says that, uh, that uh, what he tells him in darkness, and he goes on, and look at verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Amen. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Mm. Now he says, are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Now look at what he Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. That's fair. That's fair, don't you think? He says... You deny me in front of the world. You won't tell your friends about me. You will. You prayed that little prayer one day, wherever you might have been. For me, it was in a prison house in the 1980s, right? Wherever it was where you prayed, you prayed that prayer. But then you get up and you never one time tell one person that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Not your mama, not your daddy, not your brothers, not your sisters, not your lovers, not anybody. Amen. Something wrong with that. Something wrong with that. If you've got... The Lord Jesus Christ living inside of you. When you've got the Lord inside of you, and you prayed, and he came, and now he's in there, you can't help but tell people about him. And I'm not saying you're going to have all the right words. I'm not going to say you're going to have all the right verses. I'm not saying that, but there's going to be something inside of you that can't shut up when it comes to salvation. When you see your friend who's heading the wrong way in life and they're heading down the wrong road and you know where that leads, 
kind of friend to you if you don't go and try to stop them. Yeah. Here's what we do. Don't go down that road. It's not a good road to go down. Amen. But we never tell them why. Yeah. Don't you think it'd be wise to tell them why you shouldn't go down that road? Don't you think it'd be better to give them something besides your own thought and opinion on the matter? Yeah. You gotta give them the word. Amen. And look at what he says here. This is the Lord talking now. Verse 34. It says, actually verse 33, Whosoever shall deny me before man, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lord. Now verse 34. Here's something to think on. Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. What? How come they don't preach that? All I ever preach about the Lord Jesus Christ is what? Turn the other cheek. Go on, turn the other cheek. Someone slaps you in the face. Turn the other cheek. Well, what my verse? My little verse is there where it tells you to stand up. Where it tells you that you're not going to be a uh, 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 kissy lovey dovey. Look what he goes on to say here. It says, uh, verse 34, Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. I have come not to send peace, but a sword. Mm. Wow. For I am come to set a man at variance, that is against. His father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Mm. My, my, my. My, my, my. Yeah. The great divider. Yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ doesn't say, okay, everybody come together and just believe however you want and it'll all be okay in the end. That's not what the Lord teaches, unfortunately. I wish that maybe it would be easier and just all we had to do was simply believe in a God and in the end we'll all just get there. I wish it was so, but if it's so, it's not in this book and I got to throw this book away and if I throw this book away and I got to go into the world, I'm going in the world with man's wisdom. I'm going to tear it up. I'm not going to let it tear me up. I'm going to tear it up. I'm going to be more worldly than everybody. I'm going to be more ungodly than the ungodliest. I'll be more heathen than the heathens. If this isn't true, then we're just playing. Right. None of this even matters. All it's doing is making us what? More moral people? Well, good. I guess it's better to be moral than immoral, right? But let me tell you something. This book tells you that a disciple is a divider. He doesn't go home and go, hey, Mom, it's okay that you believe that way and you think Buddha is the way to get there. In the end, we'll all get there. Because what you're doing is telling your mom to go to hell. Yeah. What you're doing is telling your family to go to hell. Yeah. You're not giving them the true answer. Because you're afraid to hurt their feelings. And you're afraid that they'll look at you wrong. Because yeah. it all yeah. comes back to our own pride. Right. Our own man thinking that. Well, we don't want Johnny so-and-so to think that we're not open-minded to yeah. things. Yeah. Well, guess what? He says here that he's going to cause that. And now look. And a man's foe shall be. Now look at verse 3. Says, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Right. Okay, we got that one. And he that loveth son or uh oh, mothers, look at this. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not what? Say it. Worthy. Worthy of me. It's the second time he said it. Now look at verse 38. He that taketh not his cross and falleth after me is not. Worthy of me. Three times he says three different groups of people won't be worthy of him. The question is, is your relationship with your husband, is your relationship with your family, is your relationship with those religious people in your life so important to you that you're not willing to be the sword? You're not willing to be the one that's at variance with those? Let me tell you something. I'm not saying go start fights with your friends and your neighbors over religion. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about bringing them the final authority. And it starts with Isaiah chapter 8 and you actually believing that you do have the law. And you do have the testimonies. And they were given to you because you're a disciple. If you take Isaiah 8 to be true prophecy, then guess what? You're either one of those disciples or not. And if you're one of them, then guess what you're causing in your house? Mm -hmm. Division. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because that's what God says will happen. Amen. Not everybody that is in your family is going to go, I believe Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. So does that mean you should go, well, that's okay, Johnny, that you don't believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven? I'll love you anyway. Kissy, huggy, huggy, love you, love you. Oh, Jesus, the brotherhood of man. Nonsense. Jesus said this. You're going to be a follower of me. You're gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be, a, and you're gonna be fighting with those in your own household, not over nothing. Yeah. Over him. Over the book. Amen. See, see, it's not man's opinion on Jesus. Right. It's what a book says about Jesus. Mm -hmm. You do know we could all sit with a bunch of deliver, uh, different religious people and sit down and probably all say great accolades about Jesus. 
Now the problem isn't what they'll say, it's what they believe. Yeah. And when they say they believe in Jesus Christ, it's the Jesus they have conjured up in their yeah. own mind. Yeah. Not the Jesus of the Bible who said, if you're a believer in me, you're going to be an enemy with your own father. You're going to, a woman going to be an enemy with her own mother. Not over nothing, over this, over Amen. Christianity, over religion. Not you not picking your clothes up. That darn it, if your mom says pick your clothes up, by God, pick them up. Amen. That's not what we're talking about. Not coming home and going, I want to stay out later because I'm getting older. No, talking about the Bible says there's only one way to heaven. That's the argument. The Bible says, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Woo-wee. Yes. Every modern version takes that one out. Yeah. They take God was manifest in the flesh, yeah. and they rob it. They take it out, and yeah. they put the word he, he was manifest Christ. in the flesh. Christ was manifest in the flesh. Yeah. I like God yeah. was manifest in the flesh. Amen. Amen. God was. came down yeah. from heaven to save my there soul. God came down from heaven to shed his precious blood so that I could take and get the truth. Well, guess what? Once you get the truth, the question is whether you're going to be like those that are caring more about family, caring more about bringing everybody together. Hey, Brother Joe and Brother Joe Sr. and Joe Jr., if you guys didn't talk so much about the King James Bible and didn't have signs up there that show a bloody Jesus hanging, and you guys would be a little bit easier on sin and a little easier on this and a little easier on that, you could get more people. And if you get more people, you get more money. And if you get more money, you can get some new uh, cufflinks and some new hankies for an air and you know, all kinds of different things that you can get for yourself. It's not a career, it's a call. Amen. It's not a sermon, it's a message. Amen. It's a message from God to a preacher, to a people. You know what the Bible says? My word will not return void. Yeah. Does it say that me? Does it say I have anything? It's the word of God that yeah. doesn't come back void. Yeah. And the yeah. word of God says in closing, in closing, it says this, he that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. Then he goes on in verse 38. He says, he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Now, I want you to remember something. Go to, he, go to Acts 11 with me and we'll close with Acts chapter 11. Acts 11 in verse number 26. Now, Acts 11, 26, you have an event that takes place. An event that takes place and it's the first time you're going to have this term used. I gave you the first time that the word disciple is used in your Bible. And that's used in Isaiah chapter number 8. I then brought you over to Matthew chapter number 10. And I showed you what the Lord of glory had to say about a disciple, right? Now I want to show you something in Acts chapter number 11. Acts chapter number 11. And look at verse number 26. When he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and what? Taught much people. Now look it. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Yeah. You see, it was in Antioch where there was a group of people that for a year they gathered everybody together and they gathered them together and they taught them. Don't forget the New Testament wasn't in writing yet. Okay, so they got the Old Testament. They got the Old Testament, and they're trying to show through the Old Testament who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to get people to see that Jesus is the fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Trying to get the Jew to see it. Jesus is this fulfillment. Well, they reject him. Yeah. They reject him. They want nothing to do with him. And then what does it tell us? That he comes to the Gentile. That's yeah. us. You know what it says in Acts? The end of the last chapter of Acts, it says, and the Gentile will receive the word of God. Right. Well, for a whole year, they've got these people together, and it says that he was teaching them, right? Now, here he is teaching for a year, and because he's teaching for a year, they're called Christian. We do it backwards. Dear Lord, I pray now Jesus saved my soul. You're a Christian. You know right. what Christian means? Christ-like. Yeah. Yeah. I know a bunch of people that call themselves Christians, and you wouldn't know that they were Christ-like. Yeah. But they name the name of Christ by saying, what? Well, I believe in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The problem is it's backwards. Yeah. You should become a believer. And then because you believe in Jesus Christ, you get taught the word of God. And then people go, huh, that's a Christ-like 
person. Amen. Why? They're preaching what Jesus preached. What did Jesus preach? He didn't preach come together. He preached that if you believe in me, you're going to be at war with everybody else. Why is it backwards? Why does everyone tell you to get saved and love everybody when Jesus said that when you get saved, you're going to have a sword in your hand, the word of God, and it's going to cause people to be divided. Your own mother isn't going to want to be with you. Your own father isn't going to want to be with you. Your own daughter isn't going to be with you, want to be with you. Why do you think it is people deny Christ? Because they want to be accepted among men. Yeah. Till you say, I don't care about men and what they think of me, you're never going to be a disciple. That's good, yeah. I'm glad you're a Christian today. I am. I'm glad that you're a Christian. I'm glad you've decided to follow Jesus Christ. My question to you now is, will you become a disciple? A disciple is one that's what? Taught the Word of God. Why don't you enroll yourself into the school of Christianity and become more like Christ and what Christ said about the times we're living in? And then know what? You're going to leave the book of Acts. You're going to leave Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you're going to get over to the book of Romans and Galatians and Ephesians. You're going to get into Pauline epistles. Do you ever notice a lot of folks get stuck in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and Acts? Sure. You know why? Because they've not got the light. Check me on this. You notice the light in Isaiah 8, and then you cross-reference that to the light in Matthew chapter number 10, and you'll see when the Lord's talking to these people, he's got Isaiah in mind. Right. Did you know in Isaiah, I didn't read it for you because we'd be here all night, that it talks about him being a stumbling block? You go, well, I heard that in the New Testament. You sure did. Yeah. But it came from the Old Testament. Yeah. Jesus fulfilled everything that needed to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Everything. Every single thing, from the lame, walking, blind, seeing, to the dead being raised. He did every single thing. And know what the Jew did in the end? I don't want it. So you know what the Lord says? He says, my disciples, Isaiah, are going to be a sign to the Jew. Going to be a wonder. They're going to be an amazement over what I do. You do realize America... 400 million people, 400 million, that's a lot of people, right? There's 6 billion in the world. Mm. We are tiny. Sure. But what are we? The only, what, Christian nation in the whole world. A Christian nation that actually says in God, and when we say God, we mean Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Did you notice that this year with the politics, they're finally saying Jesus? See, it's not enough to say prayer and then say amen the bible says if you don't pray in jesus name it ain't gonna come to pass amen so you go oh that's why you pray in jesus name yeah the bible says if you don't pray in jesus name it ain't gonna come to happen so you can pray all night and day and then if you just say amen all amen means is what so be it right every time you say amen what you're saying is so be it i agree so when you look at that and you get thinking about what jesus said are you being a light are you willing to cut, cut right down the middle and say, this is where I stand and I don't go to the right and I don't go to the left. Amen. I will not take and give in to the worldly teachings of worldly churches to get the world into church. Let me tell you something. Anybody's welcome to walk in that door and hear the gospel. Amen. I was sharing with Brother Miracle here. I said, anybody's welcome to come in that door. But not everybody's welcome to come in here and spread heresy. That's right. I'll take your heresy and raise you a couple. <laughs> right? So listen to me. If you want to be a disciple of the Lord, remember something. Everybody's not going to accept you. Someone yeah. will say no. Yeah. Then it becomes, do I want to be a Christian or a disciple? The Christian will accept everybody's garbage. Let's all love each other. The disciple says, brother, I'm glad you received Christ, but you're in error. When you say that I must be baptized to get to heaven. Yeah. Right. You're in error if I you say I have to take communion right. to get to heaven. You're in error. Now some will go, well, you don't want to cause no trouble. Listen, mm -hmm. do you want to be a disciple? Goodbye. Or do you just want to be called a Christian? Right. My question to you is, what do you want to be? Right. Dre, come on up. We're going to have a time of invitation. Yeah. And my question to you is this. We open up the uh, where you sit. You can pray. You can come forward and pray. This is a time for you. And the message this morning was on being a disciple.
If you have a need this morning and you want to come forward and ask the Lord to strengthen you to become more of a disciple, the altar is open. If you need to come and just pray about your own needs, about your own family's needs, the altar is open. Say, what's the altar, Brother Joe? The altar is the killing place. It's a place for you to turn around in your own chair and pray. It's a place for you to take at the very moment that she begins to play that piano for you to go to God about the message you just heard and then do something with it. Or not. But do something. Amen. Do Amen. something. Amen. Do something. Amen. Let's pray and then Dre will start playing. Dear Lord, I do pray now for this time of invitation. I pray, God, that if there's anybody here, heads are bowed, eyes are closed for just a moment. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let me ask you a question today. If you died this very moment, would you go to heaven? If you know without a shadow of a doubt, if you died right now, you would be in the presence of God because you put your trust in him. Slip up your hand and say, Brother Joe, that's me. I prayed that prayer already. I know I'm going to heaven when I die. Slip the hand up. All right, slip it up. God bless you. God bless you. Now listen, listen to me now. Get this in your head. If you've never prayed and asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior, all it takes is you right now in your heart saying, Dear Lord, I receive you now as my personal Savior. This very day, March the 5th, at 1220, I receive you as my Savior. And pray that prayer if you've never prayed it. Ask God to be your Savior and then watch the difference in your life. If you need to become a disciple today, pray and ask God to make you that disciple. And submit yourself to the authority of the Bible this morning. Dear Lord, I pray that you bless this time of invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand to our feet. If you need to come forward, come on forward. If you want to pray where you are, pray where you are. Amen. If you need to come, come on and pray.